sure to throw us some love over at Patreon at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. It is that time of year when I sit down for my giant year in film endeavor, which means you can see installments of the cinema snobs 1984 in film long before the whole thing is released. All that and more over at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Alright, I'm back. I'm fine, by the way. <laughs> Had to give it a snazzy title. Now you know why I I haven't been streaming for a little while. And why it's uh mostly been shorts <laughs> on the channel for a couple of weeks. <laughs> gotta uh gotta give some ex gotta give an extra little boost to uh, Mr. Peter's pets that I put up the other day. Watch that watch that cinema snob episode if you haven't gotten the chance. I'll have another special video coming up here to uh probably Thursday. Thursday or Friday, not sure. You, you'll, you'll, when you see it, you'll uh, you'll like it. It's it's a video that's uh, been a long time coming, but I'm like, gotta boot, <laughs> gotta raise the watch time a little bit for the month. I know I took a <laughs> bit of a a bit of a hit, having to put really nothing but shorts up for mm -mm, a bit. Uh, but uh, anyway, I I needed that time off. I I, I needed that time away so that I could. Uh, well, so that I could finally uh, uh, make make a new intro for the front of the for the front of the video. Well, well, 1962 and film is out already, so um, gotta make one promoting 1984 and uh, not be very uh, sp like not say anything in the 1984 promo that's like the first two episodes are up on Patreon right now. Keep it vague, like the installments are on Patreon. <laughs> that way, I I don't have to change it for the next couple of months. While I'm uh, working on 1984, oh, so I, I needed the few weeks to to uh, put to, to change the background to take the uh, to take the 1962 posters down. Put up, oh, brilliant hand placement right there, Brad. <laughs> Unintentional, by the way. Oh, sorry. It's like being at the video store again. My eyes and hands are drawn right to the right to the hard bodies poster. Started writing 1984 in film earlier too, and uh, <laughs> that hard. Not the only poster that's like that. There's a there's a Robert Hayes movie in 1984 that's uh, scandalous. I think is what it was called. Practically the same poster. Not even the same kind of movie at all. But you, either or, it'd probably make me rent them. What are we renting today? I don't know. What's the sexiest box cover? Blood sucking freaks. No weirdo we're getting hard bodies and uh scandalous scandalous yeah, i think that's what uh, anyway uh, you'll find out uh i'll have that at i'll have the J i got the january part of 1984 written earlier so probably over the weekend sometime you'll uh you'll start seeing the installments of 1984 but i i know why you're actually here you're actually here no it, it doesn't have anything to do with me getting covid again or anything like that. Clearly, I'm fine. <laughs> Unless I, uh, it, it, it's a seat, it's a computer generated me right now, or it's like uh, I've been killed off in the previous one. But there needs to be videotape of me to give directions to the cast who have survived. I see you've made it to the trilogy. Here's the rules. I didn't know there'd be anything past Scream Three, so I could only give you this tape for a third chapter. Anyway, where was I going with that? Oh, speaking of Scream, I think it's in here somewhere. We're going to be bringing the Tox Box back on this episode. It won't be for the episode that's coming up on Monday. It'll be for the one the following Monday. But we're uh, getting things back to normal here with the live streaming, the Tox Box, the years in film, and all of that. Uh, speaking of, thank you so much to everyone who's checked out 1962 in film. It was, it, it it was a lot of fun doing that. Like always, the the year retrospective things really really are my favorite things to do. Uh, 
It, the 60s ones are fun, too, because there is way more in those that I'm, like, unaware of than in the 80s ones. Case in point, the snob episode I put on Monday, Mr. Peter's Pets. Did not grow up with me, Mr. Peter's Pets, but I wanted something from 62 to spotlight as a regular snob episode. Do I do one of the classics? No, no. Do the one with the guy who takes some animal ambrosia, turns into a kitten so he could watch a girl's naked. That kind of... Sounds like something they would have done as a side plot in one of the, in one of the '80s movies. So okay, now we can get to uh, me being sick. So yeah, I got COVID again, my second time. The first time I got it, I had I at least knew where I got it. The first time I got it, it was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, it was from taking the train down to my hometown, Springfield, for the holidays, and then taking the train back up. Somewhere in either train, Springfield, or train again. All right, yeah. I, 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 so Somewhere in that trip, I got it. This time, I don't know, like the store, maybe? <laughs> maybe the movie. The the most crowded, a lot of movies I go, go to see, I'm really kind of one of two or three people there the only ones that were really crowd like really really crowded that i went to go see like practically like maybe not sold out but enough to where i, I wasn't in my usual seat the most packed was like cabrini and um the dog uh the dog movie uh, arthur arthur the king it's not the COVID brain fog right now. It's just there's a lot of dog movies. Which one was it? Arthur the King. Okay, those were pretty packed. Um, but I don't. I I don't know. Like it. It could have been just like <laughs> went to Walgreens and used the keypad that day. I I don't know. But at least it was. Uh, in a way, it was not. The sickness was nicer to me this time, and in a way, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, so. I had finished, so this is the day I finished 1962 in film. Um, I finished it kind of early that afternoon. And so I'm like relieved 19, 1962 in film is done. I got some celebratory McDonald's. No joke. Yeah, I got my celebratory McDonald's. I eat that. We're watching some TV. Later that evening, I could tell I was starting to get sick. Uh, I figured it was probably the flu because, um, the weather, it had been kind of drastically changing a lot here recently. Like one day it'd be 30, the next day it might be 60. Sometimes when that happens, I, I, I might get a little sick. Not, not every time, but usually season changes. I might, I might get kind of sick. That's kind of what I thought it was because I could feel like the early, st- for me, the early stages are, I start feeling it in the throat a bit. And my mouth starts feeling a little hot. So I felt that and said to Laura, I go, I can kind of feel something coming on. I'm going to go down to the store. I'm going to pick up some Dayquil, NyQuil, cough drops, whatever. And so I went to go do that. And then in the middle of the night, (laughs) in the middle of the night, I felt a little different. I started feeling like, okay... And now my body feels like it's on fire and I feel my bones feel like they've been beaten with bats <laughs> or oranges in uh, there was no br- bruising so maybe oranges in some socks I just when I felt like that I was like crap I got it again <laughs> and like then the fever got the fever got huge it was all in the eyes again Here's how it was nicer to me this time, because at least it was cool enough to where it hit after I finished my three and a half hour video. So it wasn't like I'm almost close with 1962. I'm going to make my due date for this, get it sent off. Oh, no, I'm sick. Now I have to wait like a week to finish this thing that I'm almost done with. No, it waited for me to finish. It waited for me to finish. And also, it hit to where there was enough distance between when I was over it, when I was through, the sickness was out of me, because I had some out-of-town trips coming up, and so there was, it it went away to where it was long enough between it going away, me being negative, and me being able to go out of town again. So, 
convenient timing, I guess. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> I felt more nauseous this time. Uh, I did feel more nauseous and was... In the grand scheme of things, it's like, I, yeah, of course it could have been way worse. But I did kind of feel some breathing problems a little bit more. I was a bit more nauseous. But I had a plan, and that plan, my guard cats out there, the Siamese cure anything. Just their meow puts fear into the virus that leaves. I don't know if you could hear that. There's the cat outside, and there's a dog outside. You didn't help. You kept me awake when I was sick. <laughs> you cats were fine. Um, so, uh, no, my plan was... As long as I didn't move, <laughs> like I could fit, if I moved just a little, I know I would throw up. I would throw up and I would have serious breathing problems. So it's like, all right, I was quarantined off in this editing room, by the way. <laughs> there was some Gatorade and crackers laying around here for days. That's not even from being sick. That's just usually what's there for me editing. No, I take that back. When I edit, it's soda, coffee, and like Jimmy John's wrappers. <laughs> Didn't eat that when I was sick. Maybe could have. My taste didn't go away. I, I still kept my taste and smell and all of that. Um, so as long as I just laid there like a vampire in slumber or something and did not move, <laughs> um, I won't get I won't get nauseous and throw up. Let me just sit like this for like seventy two hours, because that's when it was when and when it went away which was like the third day, maybe. When I woke up on the third day, it was like it was purging out of me. Like, I actually felt the worst maybe the third day. Kind of. Like, I felt the most nauseous, at least. Uh, maybe the fever wasn't as bad, but I felt it, it, it was bad. The, third, the morning of the third or fourth day, however long it was, was bad. Then mid-afternoon, it left my body like... It's left Regan jumped into Jason Miller and he jumped out of the window with my sickness. Like, it did go away to where that evening I was kind of fine. <laughs> or I could, I could function at least. Then Laura got it. Jack's good, Jack's good. Um, then Laura got it. She only really had the worst of it for like a day. She had... Um, she had way better medicine than I did because when I went out to get my medicine, I went out getting medicine thinking like, oh, I probably just got a cold or something because of the season change. No, when she she kind of prepared on getting it because since I did. So she went out and got like, you know, maximum strength, like, you know, mucinic, ec, mucinic's extra and like all of this. Like, so it, it got... It got at her after after like a day or so. So that was uh oh man, that was my adventure. And then uh so I was still pretty fatigued for a bit. <laughs> I'm hoping I don't have a lot of the long stuff because that was actually really hard to go through last time. A lot of the kind of fog brain fatigue shit. Like it's it's just seriously like not fun at all. But um I'm hoping like I'm kind of I'm taking a lot more extra vitamins and shit now, so I I feel okay I I do I feel okay and I knew that since I couldn't stream really and uh do do uh some like full videos it was really just doing shorts there for a couple of weeks um I knew I I had to do like something like uh, to to kind of make up for work and originally. I was going to do, uh, we, we did a con, Doug and I were talking, and I was like, I think I'm probably going to do the Langoliers, you know, a uh, supersized episode, good watch time, good ads in there. Uh, I love doing the mini, I love doing the Stephen King miniseries. I do kind of save them for like special occasions, you know, if I got to make up a week or maybe if I'm going out of town or lying motionless because I might get sick for a few days. <laughs> So I was thinking, like, yeah, I'll probably do the Langoliers. Um, spoiler, you can probably tell where this is going, that uh, there's no episode for the Langoliers on the site. Because once I sat down to work that week, I was still pretty, like, 
ooh, foggy. Like, I, I needed something fairly easy. So, last minute, I'm like, I want to do two snob episodes this week. This is what I was thinking a few weeks ago. I'm like, I want to do two snob episodes this week to kind of make up for it. What do we got coming up? All right, it's Easter. Okay, it's April Fool's Day. Good timing to do the April Fool's Day remake. Uh, didn't do that last year. Did it? Did the original the year before. Um... Then with, uh, so I sat down to do an Easter episode before April Fool's Day. And there's a lot of those VOD killer Easter bunny movies. I was looking through the list. There was one that was from the company that did, uh, that was from Jagged Edge. The company that did uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Winnie the Pooh, Pooh, excuse me. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, by the way. Surprisingly solid. The sickness got out to me in time to go see that in the theater. It was uh, that movie was kind of a surprise. Easter Bunny Massacre, however, not so much. So I pick I had picked Easter Bunny Massacre to do as a cinema snob episode. I knew it would follow the same formula as a lot of those other movies that I did. I knew it would be I would get some material out of it, It'd be an easy enough watch. I've never, ever had to deal with any kind of copyright issues from this company before, which is kind of what I was looking for, because this was a case where I was really making up some work. So I my plan was to post Easter Bunny Massacre the day that I edited it. And again, like I said, my thought process was this company has never claimed a video before. I should be good on this. So, first of all, that was a hard movie to sit through, by the way. Easter Bunny Massacre. It was, I got some material out of it, but it, it kind of wasn't an easy sit. It, it was short, though. It was like 80 minutes long. Anyway, post-up Easter Bunny Massacre. Claimed. But it wasn't Jagged Edge that claimed it. It wasn't them. It was another company that had claimed some videos before. It's like this third party, I think like Italian company or something like that. I knew it would get... It's the same company, I think, that claimed, like, Christmas... It's usually a holiday-themed episode that has to be delayed. They also claimed, like, Christmas Evil, and I wasn't able to post that up until, like, January. The, the following January. So, anyway, yeah, they had claimed Easter Bunny Massacre. And I had already, I think, written and shot uh, April Fool's Day. And this was not a case of... This was not a case of, well, I can uh, hold off on the next episode and wait until Easter Bunny Massacre is cleared. No, I couldn't do that because it was the following episode was an episode on April Fool's Day. It had to be out on April Fool's Day. The downside of that is I had to release the April Fool's Day episode first before the Easter Bunny one because the Easter Bunny one was still going through copyright. But the April Fool's Day episode had so many callbacks. <laughs> to the Easter Bunny Massacre episode. It was actually kind of similar to what I went through a couple of years ago. I also went through some copyright issues with um, Beaster Day, I think is what it was called, and had to release that like after Easter. Same with the April Fool's Day uh, original, the 86 one. That one I think I had to wait on to release. <laughs> Easter and April Fool's Day, man. It runs in cycles. April Fool's Day didn't get claimed, though, surprisingly, the remake. Um, so I'm like, there, that's, that's kind of one of my favorite inadvertent things to happen <laughs> right up there with, the uh, uh, the jail. She's back behind the mask. He's back behind the mask from, uh, Friday the 13th part six, that audio error of mine. There's something I kind of love the fact that I had to release the April Fool's Day episode first, and it's frequently referencing the East because unbeknownst to me, Easter Bunny Massacre and April Fool's Day, the remake, are practically the same movie. I didn't expect that going in. Who thinks, oh, the Easter, the Killer Easter Bunny movie and the April Fool's Day movie, that's going to be the same plot? But it kind of was. So, yeah, there was a lot of references. And I ended up putting out a thing on Twitter that was like, oh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> The Easter one will be released later. I know there's a lot of callbacks. And there were responses going like, I'm really glad you said something. I thought I was going crazy. And even when we did the con last weekend, 
Rob was saying something like, yeah, I thought there was something I missed, like in the recommendations feed or something like that. So I don't know. It's kind of made me laugh. I think there's another mistake in a video too. Uh, I got, it was way, well, I found out about this and it was way too late for me to fix anything about it. But I guess the short review that I put up for, um, uh, um, first, the first Omen, the Omen prequel. I don't like, I loved the Omen prequel, by the way. I really, really did. I don't like that kind of title. The first Omen, the first Purge. It turns talking about the movie into a, like a who's on first routine but with horror films. So anyway, but I did really like the movie. I guess there's like an audio error. I, I watched it when I rendered it. I watched it when I converted it to like a short format. Somewhere along the way, it got glitchy, I guess. Or I got a comment about it a few, like, a few days after I posted it. So there was like nothing I could do about it. I guess it gets kind of wonky at the end. What you're missing, I guess, is, uh, let's see, I gave it an A-. minus. I said, it's great, it's like Suspiria in a convent. I said it, and essentially said, like, it does a great job of being a 70s horror film. It re it, it really, really did. I, did. I was genuinely shocked by how much I enjoyed the first Omen. My gar, it's, these are way, way, way different kinds of movies. But in terms of like, you know, legacy sequel, legacy prequel, whatever, it is like uh, we're like Top Gun Maverick where it's made by people who really get what makes this kind of movie work. They actually want to make a really, really good product. Nostalgic, sure, but a very good product that contains a lot of stuff that people love about what it's following up and also adding on top of that and doing some things that even maybe to even maybe be like, oh, I kind of like this aspect better. Or maybe that's, you know, slightly cool or whatever. But for every two movies we get like that, we get like 30 or 40 Exorcist Believers. <laughs> so, um, I didn't see him. I see you talking about, uh, uh, I, uh, oh, oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> uh, old friend of mine in there uh d i didn't see immaculate actually because of now you know why i missed some movies my friend lena in there points out uh immaculate i do need to see immaculate um i missed that one i had to see i had to wait a few days to see uh to make up and see ghostbusters Fro frozen empire because that was worth it <laughs> um but uh yeah, I, I, there's, there's actually going to be some more stuff that I will miss. Like I've kind of only got time now for at least for a little bit to only see about one movie on Thursday nights, uh, just to kind of fit in a few different things. One making up for a lot of work I missed, uh, now doing 1984 in film. <laughs> my goal was to, uh, have my next book have the draft of my next book done by the end of April. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gunning for the end of May, but even that is like, I don't think that'll happen, but we'll see. So I kind of got to squeeze in a lot of extra stuff and only have time to see about one movie. But for stuff I miss in theaters, by the way, I'm going to try to make it up when they get to streaming and do some short reviews of things when they get to streaming. I will review Immaculate, but uh, I will review Immaculate, but it, it'll it be in... Uh, things go to streaming very fast. It'll be in a couple of hours once it goes over to streaming. But anyway, you guys ready to do... Uh, you guys ready to do the Tox Box? I did... <laughs> It's been so long, I've kind of forgotten what's in here. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff I know that's in here. But I, I, I'm I picturing I'm going to pull something out and be like, I don't know what this is. Look into it for the poll choice. You can do, you can vote on these at patreon.com slash the cinema snob, by the way. Once we're done streaming... I go once we're done streaming, I go right to Patreon and add the poll. And you got plenty of time to do it too. It's not gonna be for the episode that's coming up on Monday. That's gonna be porkies. <laughs> gonna do do something very special that I've been waiting to do for a long time. I'd had to <laughs> like in case of emergency break glass episode when you've had to take a few weeks off. <laughs> porkies, perfect. 
uh, yeah, I'll be doing Porky's on Monday, but uh, this will be for the episode that's that's after that. I did add some stuff from 1962 in here. There was episodes I was going to do to really tie into 1962. Like I wanted to do um, my Geisha and Zots and stuff like that, but having to take a few weeks off, I kind of lost... Like, kind of lost the chance to do some of those uh but hey mr peter's pets right that one's up see a guy turned into a duck turns into a duck and he's on a leash for some reason point is he can swim with the naked ladies you get to see a scene in that movie where he sees a girl who's fishing she decides to do it naked by the way she really wants a goldfish so he turns into a goldfish gets in the water gets caught is surprised that the hook hurts And luckily for him, whenever any woman gets an animal in this universe, they are very flirtatious with it, take their clothes off and start posing in front of it, which she does to the goldfish in broad daylight. That's Mr. Peter's Pets, by the way. Check out that masterpiece. (laughs) I knew that would be an easy episode, too, to be perfectly honest. The movie's only like, was that, an hour and... 10 minutes long maybe or something like that i still needed to kind of take it easy (laughs) and pick something slightly easy oh mr peter's pets yeah all right there'll be a lot of stuff in that that i can't show all right so let's let's go ahead and pick four movies out of the tox box these are poll choices for an upcoming cinema snob episode again i'm always adding to it added some 1962 stuff in here as well but there's like 200 things in here hang on What does that say? Oh, okay. Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> well, that's a tall order. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a it's quite a long movie. Uh, <laughs> God, I did have it pretty easy the past few weeks, didn't I? <laughs> Between an Easter Bunny movie where nothing happens and uh, a pet movie from 1962, also kind of where nothing happens. All right. Well, Rosemary's Baby, you got a choice right there. Um... Let's get another one here. Uh, what's that say? Carnosaur 3. Okay. Carnosaur 3. Now, this one... Well, that kind of, that kind of works out because uh, one of the dudes from Carnosaur 3 also in Porky's. So that, uh, that'll be fine. I, I believe Carnosaur 3 significantly shorter than Rosemary's Baby. Sadly, there's significantly less... Uh, uh, Charles Grodin in Carnosaur 3, though, so that's unfortunate. This one, there's hundreds of choices in here. It seems like every single time this one gets picked, and not the stock choice that I put at, like, number five, the melodrama. No, no, uh, okay, well, let's throw this one on the poll again. The 1980s Gary Busey action movie, Eye of the Tiger. I got, by the time I review that, I don't know what else I'm going to say about it. I've already teased it enough when it's one of the poll choices. This just says, <laughs> I don't know what I mean by this. All this says is Turkish. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? That could, <laughs> okay, here's what I'll do. I, I'm a, I do remember I threw some stuff in here that is vague. Like, I think there's a choice in here that just simply says VHS. Like, I would pull um, just one of the v- one of my, like, uh, big box VHSs or something like that and be like, oh, uh, oh okay, here's one. Uh, d- don't open the door. So who doesn't keep a copy of Don't Open the Door in reaching distance in case you need it? Um, <laughs> so, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll look through... Uh, <laughs> I'll look through some different Turkish movies that I have and uh, see if I can find something that might fit. All right. Oh, and the uh, the stock uh, the stock fifth choice, by the way, I would throw the picture up. I used to throw the picture up for the uh, the, the Susan Sarandon dramedy from 1979, I believe. Something short of paradise. I think that's been the stock fifth choice for like m- maybe over a year now. <laughs> I'll have to check the connections list over on um over on IMDb. 
So uh, uh, the picture's not there. Normally I would put up the poster from it, but I, I, at one point I was advertising the Days of the Dead convention. Needed a place to put it. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, I would click on it, but it would just show a picture of a con that we were already at. But come see us in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks we're going to be over at uh, uh, C2E2 again. I'll have copies of class of 80, my book, Class of 86, Got my extra Jesus bros in the mail earlier. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of those at the last con I was at. But got my Jesus bros, another cinema snob movie. Going to try to get some prints actually done uh, this time, too. Some, like, shots from the show. Um, so, turns out there is an Office Max near us. So, all right, well, there there you go. There's uh, uh, Rosemary's Baby, Carnosaur 3, Eye of the Tiger, Turkish. If there's a Turkish Rosemary's Baby, I'm putting that down there. <laughs> Turkish, what is it? Okay. <laughs> Why couldn't you have been Bikini Car Wash Company? I know you're in there. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, it's been fun to get back here and ramble again. But uh, let's get over to your... Let's go ahead and get over to your super chats. <clears throat> I know there's, there's a good amount in here this time. Again... Making up for uh, make making up for being gone for a while. Sorry about that. I I didn't mean to be gone for so long. I really didn't. Okay, get to your super chats. Excellent. I remembered where they were. But but oh, oh now's the tricky part. Uh, now's the tricky part where I gotta find the scroll down bar. Okay, I know there's more. Okay. Okay. Here we go. It's just it's. Dang, there's a lot. You guys have been holding on to these questions for a while. Okay. Mm -mm. Let's get to your super chats. Thank you so much, by the way. Uh, we've got Sean Scanlon here. Scon Sean Scanlon says, "Hey, Brad. Sorry about your COVID." It did. What do you have to be sorry for? It's your fault, isn't it? You were sitting next to me at the Cabrini Theater. <laughs> Would you consider going to a Ghibli movie this year, specifically Spirited Away or Princess Mononoke, and maybe doing a video on it with Jared or The Walkers? If I had time, I would. Like I said a little bit ago, for a bit, I can really only go see about one movie a week now on Thursday nights because I've just got to fit in so much writing with the book and also 1984 guess I should spend time with the family too. No, I'm kidding. Um so so it that that would that would be a little hard. Uh in the future if I have a lot more time opened up to do more reviews like that certainly. Um Sean Scanlon, would you have would you have Dave and you do a video on James Bond? Oh, now you're speaking my language. The Gib the Ghibli stuff Rob could definitely talk about talk about a lot. Me, well, actually Rob with this too. James Bond. We have done a midnight screenings on James Bond. We did uh, Living Daylights. Uh, video me and Dave James Bond specific movie like Goldfinger or Never Say Never Again, which Dave loves. Probably wouldn't do uh, something like that on Goldfinger since I got a cinema snob on it. I, I want to do more snob Bond movies again. I really do. Again, I'm pretty sure there's Bond choices in here. <laughs> and Dave, I think Never Say Never... Yeah, Never Say Never Again is Dave's favorite of uh, the James Bond movies. And Sean says he's got the Warner clamshell. I don't. I've got a lot of those CBS Fox VHSs for James Bond. Uh, yeah, I guess Dave and I did. He mentions Dave and I talked about it in the November Man Midnight Screenings. I figured the main thing we'd be talking about in the November Man Midnight Screening was when uh, the power went out in the building or something like that. Something happened to where like all the projectors shut off. Me and Dave were at November Man. Irving and Jake were at uh, that As Above, So Below, the found footage one. They were at that, and so we were waiting a while for the projectors to turn back on, and then when we went back in the November Man, there was only like five minutes of the movie left. We waited like an hour to see the last five minutes. <laughs> um, okay. 
Sean again. Thank you so much for your questions, Sean. I remember when you had, he says, I remember when you had your VHS collection in the background. I, I have two Warner clamshells that you have. Rio Bravo and Sharky's Machine. Hell yeah. Two movies I grew up with. Uh, used to have used to have them both on tape. I grew up with them, having taped them off of HBO, where they actually gave Rio Bravo like an intermission to like halfway into the movie, like my copy, not like it was again, it was taped off TV, had like an intermission in it where it was just like a stock shot of John Wayne from the movie, and it was like a countdown uh, for when the movie was coming back, and it was playing um, the uh, Ricky Nelson song from the movie we would we like we love that song we love that song so we would typically keep the intermission on john bondy how do i do midnight screenings request on patreon uh whenever we turn it back on again which might be a while uh so for now um your best bet of getting me to watch something is voting in the poll choices over on patreon uh james moiner good Good seeing, you, good seeing you again, man. James Moyner says, I saw a 13-film Blu-ray set called From Hollywood to Heaven, The Lost and Say the... Lo- oh, yeah, I know about this. It's a box set. From Hollywood to Heaven, The Lost and Saved Films from the Ormond Family, which is on Amazon. Yeah, that would be the Estes Perkel movies. That would be the Grim Reaper. Uh, the 38... Stri- the 39 stripes is that the other one i i, I want to say that's the only one left of the orm of the religious ormond movies that i haven't done and probably should i don't think that's in here actually the sequels to thief in the night are in there uh i would so buy that blu-ray man ormond films on blu-ray you had to put that in your collection right next to the Bat Pussy Blu-ray because it's hilarious that either of those are on Blu-ray. <laughs> At least with the Horman movies, people know who made them and who's in them. John Bondy again. What is Jack's favorite food and toy? Uh, well, we're in the process right now of... Um, he's still mostly doing his formula right now, but we are in the process of uh, of introducing a lot of solids in the form of like fruity pastes a uh, little they they look kind of like applesauce on the go <laughs> like uh, if i'm on a road trip i might want to steal one of these from jack i gave him some earlier earlier we tried out the i think it was like apple raspberry or something like that some nice apple raspberry paste while he's sitting in his chair like a little buddha in his uh food diaper and uh <laughs> So the food it's dripping, so the diaper can kind of catch that too. So had his had his little spoon in his dish. Put his all right. Let's let's check out this uh, delicious paste. Don't worry, we made sure not to get the limited edition ghost pepper kind. Give him his paste, and at first he was kind of like, but then kind of got used to it. He by the end of it, I think he quite enjoyed it more so than. The banana one that he had the other day. That might be his favorite one now. Uh, so <laughs> it was like watching me eat the Fruit Loops uh, Pop-Tarts, where at first, negative reaction. But then you kind of realize this is happening. Uh, you, it, it, you, now, that it's, now that I'm already ingesting it, maybe it's okay. I think that was the biggest turnaround that I had on a Brad Tries episode, where by the end I was like, maybe it's actually not bad am i am i really just kind of used to it by now or is it okay is it just the corners of it that are questionable so i'm thinking that that uh little like uh baby uh tube paste that i gave him earlier might be his favorite thing right now he likes his rice crackers he likes his rice crackers a lot john bondy what is your favorite thing to do to make jack laugh oh that's very very easy I uh, I show him my Nuki episode, of course. No, no. Uh, so that uh, that's easy. When Jack is uh, when I just want to hear him laugh because his laugh is awesome. We got uh, I love his laugh so much that over on my Twitter, I was like, I want to post just. <laughs> it's my boy. I love my boy. I gotta put. I, I want other people to enjoy his laugh as much as me, and so. 
I'll sometimes I'll get down and I'll, I'll make him laugh or if he's he's or if he's upset I'll get down there to kind of make him laugh too and usually I get down pretty close to him and I call him like stinky or smelly or uh, yeah I'll be like dirty stinky rotten smelly boy and then he'll like smile put his hand up like this like this and I'll be like oh you've got a secret don't you <laughs> like he looks devious you know with his fist and mouth and all that and smiling and he's kind of got my eyebrows he's kind of got my like intense arced in eyebrows so it it does look like he's up to something. So if if I do make him laugh, he, he might be laughing about... So, if he laughs on his own, it might be about something very evil. Or maybe I've just been watching too many It's Alive movies this year. Mm-mm. John Bondi again. I do hope you, Laura, Jack, Burton, Pearl are okay. Oh yeah, we're all good. The cats, they... <laughs> They, they they had no idea we were sick. Yeah, we're all fine. We're all fine. The cats were fine with it. They, they just kind of laid in here. They're like, uh, oh, well, Brad hasn't moved for 72 hours. Should be our, I think we're in the clear to lay on him. Just not on my stomach, guys. John Bondi, any chance of you and Doug or and or Rob doing a midnight screening of Red Letter Media's movie Space Cop? I haven't actually seen that. I doubt it. Like, I... I don't like reviewing other YouTubers' movies. I did it once for a movie that was out in theaters. Like, it was in theaters, so I saw it and reviewed it because I was seeing everything, and I did feel bad about it. I really, really did. I was just like, I don't like doing this. Like, we're all on YouTube. We're all, like, kind of in this boat together and everything, and <laughs> you could easily give very negative reviews to movies I made, too. <laughs> It's not like all my movies are great. So, no, I I don't. Nah, I, I, I haven't seen the movie. Like, uh, if I watch it and really like it, yeah, I'd get on here and be like, oh, I finally checked this out. You should go see it. Sitting down and review it, like, I'll review my own movies. I'll do that. I'll review it. I've done that before. I reviewed uh, the first Cinema Snob movie. John Bondi, do you like Impractical Jokers? I find it funnier than Jackass because there's more of a competition to the pranks and a goal, and they are friends. Well, I think they're friends on Jackass, too. <laughs> Only true friendship can you knock a plate of soup out of somebody's hands as they're walking by. Uh, no, I, I actually haven't seen Impractical Jokers. Uh, I know what it is. Uh... I remember they had a movie. I remember when that came out. Uh, didn't see it. Uh, but uh, there, there's so many things like where I'm like, yeah, I know what that is just from the title, but I haven't seen it. I, I don't. I, I just kind of have like my main five shows of all time that I watch. No, I'm kidding. I've seen way more than that. But uh, typically at night we're relaxing and watching like a competition. Well, you said competition, so that's actually up our alley. We we do love our competition shows, but uh, they they released a new season of Visit Cake, so we might be watching that for a couple of weeks. Matt Florent, hey Br- hey Brad, glad you're doing better. You could probably tell my, my by my voice that I'm doing better. I meant to say something about this earlier, but <laughs> you could tell that I was recently sick when I did Easter Bunny Massacre. My voice was shot when I was recording the audio for Easter Bunny Massacre. Like, I wasn't, I didn't feel sick, and I had tested negative by then, but just, I still had sick voice. <laughs> and it was, ooh, I, my my voice hurt when I got done recording the audio for Easter Bunny Massacre. I think I reference it somewhere in the video. We were doing a meeting like a week after that, and I had said, I think I forgot what I said. I said something in the meeting, and uh, Rob said, um, Rob goes, oh, I'm glad you got your voice back, and I go, oh, yeah, I did, thanks, and he goes, he goes, what? No, he goes, no, I was actually being sarcastic. You don't sound very good. I go, I go, I sounded way worse a week ago. I go, this is, I feel fine right now. I sounded tremendously worse when I recorded when I recorded Easter Bunny Massacre. Later he saw it and was like, you're kind of sick in that one. No, no, I felt okay. My voice didn't. Um, okay, where was I? 
Oh, well, Robert Hayes is here. He heard me reference his 1984 movie earlier. Uh, Scandalous, I think. I hope I'm getting that right. I only wrote the review earlier this afternoon, or the that piece of 1984. Oh, I'll get to you in a minute, Robert Hayes. If I had a nickel for every time I said that. I uh, I got you, Matt. I see your question right above that. Sorry, I almost went past it. Sorry about that. Matt Florent again. Hey, Brad, glad you're doing better. As YouTube gets more restrictive, has that impacted your choice of what to review? Yeah, it has. Um, it makes. There are things that I've reviewed in the past in the past that no way would I be able to now I wouldn't be able to do a review of something like Ilsa um the uniforms alone would make it very hard to review that um stuff that you used to be able to show a lot more gore now that's that's a bit harder uh it's a bit harder to show more gore now uh I, it used to be you could use like black boxes to cover up some stuff. Now it, it'll just get, it, it'll just like limit its reach. So if you're showing a sex scene now, you kind of just got to show a still shot that's like really zoomed in and like no motion or anything, like no black, like just zoom it in where you can't see anything and just no motion. Uh, at least that's usually what I do when I have to review like an adult parody. And even then it's kind of been a while since I've reviewed one of those. So yeah, there, there are things where it would be a lot harder for, for sure, but nothing that's really made me mad, honestly, because there's nowadays there's just so many more types of movies that are incorporated into the show, whether it's like an old raunchy comedy, whether it's something from the sixties, whether it's, uh, you know, I was doing the religious movies for a while. Um, there's, there's a wealth of a lot of different things that I can still do. Like, sure. I might not, you know, be able to put Edward penis hands on YouTube or anything like that, but I, you know, I, live the rest of my life reviewing nothing but like Italian knockoffs and still only cover like 1% of them. Like I have, there's just a fountain of stuff to choose from that if there's something I can't do much of anymore, fine. You know, there's a lot of other stuff I can have fun watching. Uh, okay. We're back. Now we're back with Robert Hayes. Uh, Robert Hayes, do you have a favorite, a favorite of the Brad tries the state fair? Like a favorite food, um, that chicken on a stick thing that Dave and I had last year was so good. Uh, but if you're talking like gimmicky, fried mac and cheese is always great. Um, the fried key lime pie was magnificent. Uh, those I would put up there, um, that just off the top of my head. With the first year we had the meat parfait, it was great. And then when that shop went away, and then another one did like a meat Sunday parfait thing, it was gross. <laughs> but the first year we did the meat parfait, it was excellent. Um, let me just kind of scroll up and make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, okay, it doesn't look like I missed anything. I always feel so bad when that happens. All right. Um, okay, we did Brad tries to stay fair. All right, we'll be doing that again in August, by the way. Uh, visiting Springfield for the fair again. Retro Station 1989. Hey, Steph. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like... I've accidentally received received an email that was supposed to go to the Stephanie Miller show. <laughs> now, uh, uh, hey, comma, Steph, got it. Hey, Steph and I loved seeing you guys this weekend. Oh, yeah, oh, I know who you are now. You're not Stephanie Miller at all. Uh, <laughs> Steph and I loved seeing you guys this weekend. We did, um, uh, uh, we've had a lot of cons this month, and uh, and I just had COVID, that's going to be my excuse forever with my brain farts. Midwest Gaming Classic. We did that last weekend. 
We had a great time. <laughs> we had a great time with that too. Uh, it was it was nice meeting you guys too. Y'all were so kind, and he says, uh, y'all were so kind, and we can't wait to see you guys again at C2E2. We'll be there. We'll be there at C2E2. I love cons. I, God, I still love doing cons. We did Midwest Gaming Classic. We were walking around the video. They had a whole arcade set up in there. But there was like a, uh, there was a lot of pinball this year. <laughs> So I was, and which is fine. I, I do like pinball. Don't get me wrong. I'd be walking through like, oh, Looney Tunes pinball. Okay, I'll play that for a little bit. Pulp Fiction pinball. Right on. I'll play that. Whether we did some video of us playing the uh, Jaws pinball. And afterwards, I'm walking through. I'm like, oh, there really is a lot of pinball in here. Uh, you got is there at least a, a Lethal Enforcers or Sunset Riders. You had a, at least a T2 arcade around here somewhere. The Simpsons arcade. Eventually, I found a Simpsons arcade there. But I'm walking around like, oh, this, let me look for something that's not pinball. I go to the console area, and there's a uh, virtual boy sitting there. I'm like, cool, flashback. Yeah. So I sit down in the chair. I'm like, I'm going to play me some virtual boy for a bit. It's been 30 years. Sit down, put my eyes in. Title comes up. Virtual pinball. I'm like, all right, I'll play it for 15 minutes. I'll play it till my eyes hurt, which wasn't long. Um, Jacob Matthew Crawford. Hope the Springfield trip was excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah, we went there to visit. The family got to see. It was cool. A lot of the family got to meet uh, Jack for the first time. So that was awesome and heartwarming and everything. We got some very good pictures. Posted up one of them over on our Twitter, the one where Jack was infatuated with the fan that was above him. Not the old-timey phone behind him, but the the fan. <laughs> if that thing started ringing, it might have scared the shit out of him. It scared the shit out of me. That thing hasn't worked in years. I knew that phone was haunted. Took Jack downstairs to take a picture in the old snob room. And we had to make sure to just stand in, like, one area in the snob room. If you see in the picture, you still see the wood-paneled wall behind me in that room. Right now, that is the only part of that room that still has the wood-paneled wall, <laughs> the wood paneling on it. If I had panned over, you would have seen, like, <laughs> just, like, really no wall sitting there or just parts of a wall and uh you would have seen like uh what looks like leatherface's fridge sitting next to it i'm like don't worry son we'll we'll get out of the scary room momentarily yes dad did sleep in here for about 10 years he didn't notice how scary it was because he was drunk it's the room had no windows it was very easy to sleep off a hangover in there when i was younger but yeah, we had a good trip to, to Springfield. Uh, oh, Jacob also says, with the five-year anniversary coming up in a few months, how do you look back on another cinema snob movie? Oh, I, 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 really, I do really like that movie. I do. I, I, I wouldn't call it, of the movies I wrote, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I do really like it. I would, I, I would put it up there. I, there's things that, like everything, uh, there's a, uh, there's stuff I can look at and be like, oh, I wish that was improved or that was improved. But, you know, it it was a low-budget movie. Um, if I could change anything about it, like some of that really fast green screening in the cars, like I thought it was funny at the time. Now I'm like, I don't know if I really, if that joke really sells. Like even with my character saying like, what's with bad green screening? That, I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'd change that. But uh, other than that, though, no, I, I thought that was a, I thought that was a funny movie. There's there's things that were uh, cut from the script for budget reasons, uh, time reasons. I think this the original script is on Patreon, so you can see what the original script looked like. There was a whole segment where they were run out of town because they went to uh it's the part where they get in the movie they get run out of town when they visit this diner the, the movies are it's a road movie where they're trying to get to the snob's dad and uh so they get to the, they get run out of this diner and the way it was in the script is at some point they're at like a like a midwest like stand or a southern or midwest stand up comedy uh uh 
bar. Um, though they're they're at a comedy club, and they're like kind of forced to get on stage and try stand up comedy, and a few of them bomb. Except Rob's character doesn't. Rob's character gets up there and just starts telling a bunch of jokes about YouTubers, which totally lands with the audience. <laughs> um, I really like that scene a lot. It was one of my favorite scenes that was in the script. It did have to be cut. We didn't have the budget for that scene. So, understandably, like it, it, it had to be cut from it. But that's one of the things they tell you is you have to be prepared to cut like your favorite scene. And with that one, yeah, kind of. Uh, there was also a whole different third act of it. Again, this I understand why it was changed. It gets... It starts kind of satirizing like vanity projects originally in the third act where it kind of gets very dark and uh, pseudo personal as well about like myself and it, it still kind of, it, it plays with tropes of turning into like this big vanity project, but looking at it like it was like yeah this is it was too much of a tonal shift from everything else that had happened so then it it, it became the ending that it became the ending that's in it that's in it now um and i like the ending that's in it now cuz it also kind of pokes a lot of fun at like sentimental happy endings i like i like that um but uh no i i think the movie is it's got a lot of laughs in it it was honestly in terms of being in a movie because I did Ryan Mitchley, my, my buddy Ryan, he directed that. Uh, but I, yeah, I wrote it and of the movies I've acted in, it was one of my favorite shoots to be on and it was a hard shoot. It was because we weren't expecting, we weren't expecting this gigantic snowstorm to happen. We weren't expecting this giant snowstorm to happen. And so it got really cold, and it's a mostly outdoor movie, so we were just like this family. We're bundled together. We're sharing these hot lights and everything. We're getting back to the hotel and putting our feet in this hot water. Like, we were all there for each other, man. And it was a hard shoot, but movie shoots are hard. Like, you know, it is a, it's fun, but it is a job. So, but we were... We were like, we are never going to forget this experience. <laughs> and yeah, looking back on it, it it was just, there's those magical shoots that you're on that are simultaneously difficult, but you're like cherishing how difficult it is. And that was kind of this, because we all just loved each other on that shoot so much. Granted, I am speaking from the perspective of me and like the other actors in it. The crew members they might have a different perspective because they were outdoors way more than we were <laughs> setting up everything. So uh, maybe Ryan would say different. Maybe Ryan would sit here and be like, I am never doing that again. <laughs> you at least got to sit by some lights. <laughs> but no, I, I, uh, I would love to do a third one. I really would. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I would love to do a third one. Um, okay. Oh my friend uh Kermit, will you will you be with Doug at Cleveland Gaming Classic in September? I believe so. Um I don't know if that's one he's doing solo or not. I need to I need to start marking these on the calendar because I forget. <laughs> we have lots of cons coming up, so I usually forget. I I know that he was asking us about one a couple of weeks ago. And most and most of us said that we were free, and like that one was, was one I said was free. Yeah, okay. I, I can I recall saying yes to one in September. I've got. Let's see. There's C two E two coming up. Um, Eddie Deason and I are doing one. Uh, we're do, Eddie Deason and I. Uh, uh, my friend Steve. He's both me and Eddie's publicist. So. Eddie and I are trying to be like this package deal at some con. So Eddie Deason and I are both paired up to do uh, Planet Funk Con. And I think we've Eddie and I have one coming up in October as well. So uh, we got those coming up. And it's like, the next meeting we have, I'll be like, okay, I've got a pen. I'm writing this down. What are our, what are our uh, cons again? Jacob Matthew Crawford. Let me take a drink. There's a lot of questions this time. <laughs> Jacob Matthew Crawford. 
You ever seen Big Bully? Oh, yeah, yeah, with uh, Rick Moranis and Tom Arnold. It was marketed as a kid's film, but is actually pretty twisted and disturbing. Its director is Steve Miner of Friday the 13th, 2 and 3. And the Day of the Dead remake, thank you very much. I have seen that. I haven't seen it since it came out. I do remember kind of liking that about the movie was that it got kind of dark in the last act where Tom Arnold figure yeah Tom Arnold figures out who Rick Moranis is and then bullies him in the movie but then goes into like cable guy territory like not I I love cable guy and cable guy is way better than big bully but it did get darker in the last act there's isn't there a part where Tom Arnold is chasing Rick Moranis with like a nail gun and like straight up trying to kill him and Tom Arnold is kind of playing it straight when he's chasing him I remember liking that about it Maybe I'd see it now and not so much. But back then, I remember thinking, this movie's kind of better than I thought it was going to be. Drunken Buddha. Is Porno Holocaust still the worst movie that you reviewed? No, 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 no. That hasn't been the worst in a long time. Porno Holocaust is just too long and kind of boring. Uh, I'll say that I'm still going to say the worst just in terms of te- the technical aspects of it and just not fulfilling its intended goal is bat pussy it is anti-porn it is flat out unsexy and i think you're supposed to get aroused by it but so not it is like watching drunk sex if you're not drunk like and so the guy in it like can't get it up or anything like that it, it is a gnarly movie to look at but just even on a technical level just hearing the crew belch in the background and hearing them give action and dude yeah it's you have to see it to believe it it is very hard to describe that movie because you won't come anywhere close to what you see in front of you i so I'll, I'll say that not the hardest movie i've sat through i've seen that movie i've seen bat pussy more than once because it is funny so the movie didn't make me mad or anything like that but for a lot of reasons i will say that's the worst John Bondi, there is a Wizard of Oz porno worthy of a snob episode. It is musical as well. Oh yeah, yeah, I know I yeah, I know about that one. Uh there's a song about how the lion questions if he's gay. It's about time. <laughs> there was a question. Um I I I'll look into that and see how difficult it would be to do on YouTube. I did the Alice in Wonderland musical one, but again, that was back in the blip days. This is the, the Wild West in terms of making videos. Sean Scanlon, what happened to the site's Facebook? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, so, the Facebook page was... Facebook shut down the snob Facebook page like several months ago. I don't know why. Maybe there was an old link to like one of the uncut episodes or something that I like forgot to take down because I didn't know that was against the rules. <laughs> Maybe there was one that was still up and they got the account for it and I tried to get it turned back on and appeal it, but I there was no one I could... I don't think there's anyone who works there. <laughs> so eventually, I couldn't appeal it, so eventually the account, the account just disappeared. And, uh, but I did last week start a new one. There's, I just started it. I haven't gotten a chance to promote it yet. So it has like zero followers on it, but it's there. I started a new Facebook page. It's like facebook.com slash the real cinema snob. I believe that's it. Uh, facebook.com slash the real cinema snob, because even though they got rid of the other account, I still couldn't use, they still wouldn't let me use facebook.com slash the cinema snob. So the real cinema snob, I believe it's under that. Uh, You should be able to find it on Facebook. Uh, When's the next Bond snob? Uh, When's the next Bond snob? Uh, When I have, those episodes take a little longer, which is why there's a lot of time between them. But I'm pretty sure I have, uh, James Bond choices in here or probably a card that says Bond so it'd be whatever the next Bond movie is that I'd have to review or a snob on A Fine Madness a weird oh that way I think I talk about A Fine Madness in one of the 80s and film retrospectives uh a weird comedy with Connery during his Bond years or maybe I didn't 
there was a there was like a zany Sean Connery comedy in one of the early 80s uh, retrospectives I did. Maybe it wasn't that one. I don't remember. Sean Scanlon. Have you seen Guns of Navarone or Force 10 from Navarone? Yeah, I have. Yeah, of course. I <laughs> grew up on the J. Lee Thompson movies, whether it's Guns of Navarone or all the, mainly the Bronson movies from the 80s or the J. Lee Thompson movies I grew up on. Guns and Navarone I talk about a little in uh, 1961 in film. Uh, my friend Jordan, Jordan Shaw. Hey, Brad, I'm glad you're feeling better. Just wanted to tell you that Class of 86 is amazing. Thank you so much. Glowing review, considering that uh, that I know you had the, uh, the Bruce edition, the one with the typos in it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I hope that made it more amazing. <laughs> The copies of Class of 86 that have been out for a while have been fixed, thanks to uh, Jacob Matthew Crawford. Uh, but uh, no, I, I'm really glad you liked it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've, I've gotten some very good feedback on that. People really dig the book. And uh, I'm hearing people love that it. it is a very fast-paced book. Like it's, it, it is a quick read. So um, I like that about it, that people are, are getting through it fairly quickly, honestly. So... Thank you. I'm glad that you and everyone else who really dug the book. And I hope you like the next one, too, uh, when I'm feeling well enough to finally get back at it. Can't wait for the second. Can't wait. Oh, it ties into that. She says, uh, can't wait for the second novel. <laughs> Me, too. Me, too. I am really excited. My second book, which is called Bat Pussy, by the way. James Moyner. James Moyner message retracted. What did you call me? Uh, James Bondy. Space Cop is a funny movie and worth checking out. Okay, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I will. Uh, I, I should sit down and, wa and watch that because, yeah, it's not. I know what the movie is. It's not like I heard it was bad or anything like that. Uh, but, yeah, so some afternoon I got free. Uh, maybe I'll sit down with the boy and uh, and uh, watch some some Space Cop. Or well, before we watch Space Cop, I should probably introduce my son to the original space cop, Casper and the Angels, the 1970s Hanna-Barbera cartoon, which is the first time I had ever seen Casper the Friendly Ghost as a kid, was Casper the Angels. So I thought that Casper the Friendly Ghost was always a show about a ghost cop in space with partners who ride space motorcycles. I thought that was the original Casper, like, deep into my teenage years. <laughs> maybe not maybe not that long <laughs> i think i had figured it out before the casper movie came out i don't recall seeing the trailer for the casper movie and being like where the hell are the space cops <laughs> where's harry scary he's not in this this is a bullshit adaptation why is it in a house <laughs> did you not have the budget uh james bondy again this is the last one then i should take off i'm gonna start uh Getting into my my deep um, Easter Bunny massacre voice before too long. Hey Brad, is your Patreon ch tiers change? Snob DVD tier? Oh, I should probably take that. Uh, no, uh, no, I I think the tiers are still there, but people mainly do the uh, two dollar or the five dollar one because uh, two dollars is uh, the polls and all that and AMAs. Five dollars is five dollars is uh all of the uh the, you you get videos in advance uh you see like uh snob episodes in advance and the installments of the day the year in film series for instance um this weekend i'll be editing the january part of 1984 in film so once i get done with that the january part of 1984 in film will be on uh uh <laughs> I was hoping I'd get this next question. I'm I'm surprised it took this long to get this next question. Um, yeah, uh, you you see a lot of snob episodes in advance, or, or when you do the 
five dollar tier see rizzy 1989 hey brad did you see the maxine trailer very midnight heat you should sue i can't wait for the maxine movie i can't i loved pearl i loved x when i saw the next one was like an 80s sleaze flick i'm like yeah man i'm down and the trailer looks great and yeah when i was watching the trailer it, it didn't take me very long. I was like, this is like kind of like Midnight Heat. I directed this movie called Midnight Heat in 2007. It's a sleazy, like, cops, hookers, serial killer, 80s, like, coked out cop sleaze flick. And uh, uh, it all, it, Midnight, it, my movie Midnight Heat, it all takes place like in, in one night where there's a serial killer known as the Scalper who's preying on hookers, a cokehead cop has a connection with a really popular prostitute and then they're trying to like kind of catch this guy but then it turns out that her pimp is also bonkers as well uh that was this movie i did uh, a while back i took i haven't seen the movie in a long time but i i was really proud of that when i when i made it so i'm watching the trailer for maxine and i'm and i'm going like this is cool it's kind of like looking at like what i would have done with a budget or something like that it even has a couple of the songs from the soundtrack of mid that i used on the soundtrack to midnight heat my movie midnight heat it opens with playing uh self-control by laura brannigan there's a part in it where it's playing obsession by anna motion those are in the trailer by the way in no way, no, of course I'm not going to sue or anything like that. In no way do I think, like, he su- he ripped off my movie. No, 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 no. My movie, Midnight Heat, is very much inspired by stuff. Like, there's a lot of Vice Squad in it. A lot of Vice Squad. It's inspired off of that and stuff like Angel, Ty West. I'm sure is also a huge fan of Vice Squad and Angel and movies like that. As much as I would be really, really flattered if, if it turned out Ty West is a huge fan of my night of my 2007 movie Midnight Heat shot on high eight cams. I would be very honored and flattered. Uh, but yeah, I looking at the trailer for that i was like i'm excited for this 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 really does look like one of my movies on like a way bigger budget um i'm cool with that um so uh i think that's it uh they got uh, they got uh, they were good here thank you very much everyone thanks so much for watching i think we got through the whole thing without a lot of glitching going on i might be like kind of centered a little too low but Work on my posture a little bit more, okay? Or angle the camera a little better. I'm I'm finally back at this. I'm just glad I remembered where all the buttons were. So go to patreon.com slash the cinema snob. I'll figure out what Turkish movie to make one of the choices. But if you go there, uh, give give me a give me a little bit uh, before I go to sleep tonight. I'll put up those poll choices for a future episode. Okay, let me just triple check that i got no okay no more questions in there all right let's get to the ending uh king frat theme and we're out take care everyone have a great week